Hello everybody and welcome back to the art room. It's Mr. G. How are you doing? This is a lesson today for kids that are in second grade or for that matter any grade really but this is for second graders who are out and at home quarantined or sick or just have to be at home. This is a project that we just started and it's December now and the snow is coming in Wisconsin here and Christmas is coming so we're going to do a winter snowman. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to draw the snowman on this side of the paper, on the left side. The head of the snowman is going to be a circle so I like to try to find something that is circular like this big cup that I've got here big tub and I'm going to trace it real carefully with a pencil and that's going to be the start of our snowman that's going to be his head the second thing I'm going to do is with a pencil real lightly I'm going to draw the nose and the nose of a snowman is usually made out of a carrot and that's going to be a triangular shape so I'm going to start here and I'm actually going to make this rounded so it looks more realistic like a like a carrot and I'm gonna make this really long because we're going to put a bird on top of this snowman's nose so there's one part of it and then we're gonna make this get narrower and narrower and that is going to be our carrot once we've got the carrot where we want it we can outline it in Sharpie like this I might make it a little bit skinnier and a little bit longer than I did before. And if it's a little bit wavy, that's fine because a carrot naturally is not perfect. It's not perfectly straight. It's a little bit wavy. And then we can get rid of any pencil lines that we don't need. So we're not going to need that line right there because the carrot goes in front of the head. So that just helps us to not trace any lines that we're not supposed to later. And this is a, one of the reasons why when we use a pencil, we use it very, very lightly because we know we're going to have to erase eventually. Now we're going to do some eyes and the eyes are going to be made out of buttons. So I'm going to do a large oval and maybe make it go a little bit behind the carrot there. So that's going to be one eye. And then the other one, that's directly, that first one was a, directly above the carrot. It looks like it's on the other side of the carrot. And this one's going to be in the middle here. And it's going to be a little bit bigger just because it's a little bit closer to us with perspective. And I'm going to make these look like buttons. So I'm going to get a couple of big buttonholes and put them right in the middle like that. If you wanted to make four buttonholes you could but I'm just going to use two. And then I'm going to make the hat and this is uh, what's called a stovepipe hat and they call it a stovepipe hat because way back in the olden days when they had wood burning stoves, cast iron stoves, they would have a pipe coming out uh, for the chimney and they would be in this shape it would look like this top of this hat, which is a stovepipe hat. I think the most famous person that wore a stovepipe hat was Abraham Lincoln. And um, the second most famous was probably Frosty the Snowman. So then where the circle at the top meets the brim of this cap, I'm going to draw a line that just goes straight up like this. So the hat, most of it is going to be off the paper, but now that we've got it where it is, we can erase the other lines that we don't need again. And we can go ahead and trace that line as well. I'm going to be moving along pretty fast with this because we only have so long to make a video before we run out of uh, space uh, as far as being able to save something and to hold your attention as well. So then I'm going to also put another line right here 
for the band on a hat. So this will be colored black and that will be colored black. I can do that real quick. I'll color this in black. If you notice how I color, I don't want to do this as fast as I can. I want to do it neatly. I usually like to color, I, I'll trace around the outside and then I'll color inside using like a round circular motion technique. And that way I color it in a lot better. I don't miss any spots at all. So it's nice. Everything's going to look real well colored in. Just like that. I'll do the same thing up here as well. I'll do that later. Again, I like where these buttons are, so I'm going to make them permanent. I'm going to take my Sharpie and I'm going to trace around those lines very, very carefully. Even more carefully than when I initially drew it because now they're permanent lines. Okay? Then, I might as well do this as well. This is where the outline of the head is. And the only thing I'm missing in this snowman's head is its mouth. And its mouth is going to be made up of pieces of coal or black circles. Now I'm going to just real lightly pencil in where this mouth is going to be. And that way I can follow it when I draw the circles. So this is where the line is going to be. So I'm just going to draw these circles along that line. Looks like I'm only going to have about four of them. But I might end up, if, they, I made them, if I made them smaller, I would have five or six circles. And they're going to be pieces of, small pieces of coal, so I'm going to go ahead and color those in with the black marker again. And that looks like a mouth. And then I can go ahead and erase again any of these lines that I didn't need. All right, so there we go. One other thing that I can do with this carrot to make it look more realistic, carrots have these little lines, and I'm gonna follow this curve of the end of the carrot. So this looks like it's rounded, and they've got little lines in them, and I'm just gonna kind of randomly make some of those on there so it looks more like a carrot. Okay, looks good. When I do it randomly, I don't want to do it every, you know, I don't want to space it out evenly or it'll look like a ruler on there. And we're going to color this in later, but first we're going to draw where the body is. Now the body's going to be way bigger than the head. So I'm going to go, here's the left side of the paper, here's the right side, here's halfway. I'm going to go even further than halfway and I'm going to make this round part of a circle there and maybe a little one there as well on the other side. And usually at the neck of the um, snowman you're going to put an old scarf or something. So I'm going to make a bump here at the neck area and another one over here and I'll make a line that comes around like this. And that's going to be a scarf. And then we'll have one part of the scarf, the end of the scarf come up like this, this little curl, and then this will be the end. And then we might put some little fringes coming out the end. And then the other side will go down and off the page like this. So we can trace those lines. Real carefully. These are the lines that go off the page. These are the lines that curve up. And this can be the end. And then we can see this is right there and this right there as well. So that's the body. And again, there's some pencil lines we don't need, so we can erase those. 
and we're done drawing the snowman. The next thing we're going to do, and again, the reason I made this so long is we are going to put a little bird perched on the snowman's nose. So we're going to draw a bird, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw just the main parts of the bird. So the body of the bird is going to be a round circle. So I'm going to envision where it's going to be. It's going to be about the size of a tennis ball, and it's going to be pretty close to the nose so that we can put its legs connecting to that. So I'm just going to sketch a circle about the size of a tennis ball. And then for the head of the bird, I'm going to do another circle, but this one is going to be about the size of a golf ball. It's going to be like that. And you see how it's connected or it's intersecting the other one? It kind of looks like a figure eight for that. And then I'm going to make a little triangle for a beak Again, the basic parts of the bird is going to make this up. And then for the tail, we're just going to make a triangle coming down. Straight down. Like this. And that's the basic shape of the bird. I'm going to make this into a, a cardinal. And a cardinal has a little triangular back of the head. Like this. The feathers actually come up and kind of come to a point in the back. So I'm going to do that as well. And then we're just going to make a couple little lines like this for the legs where it's perched on the carrot. And then maybe one more little line like this that's going to be where the wings are, or the wing. Okay, so now I am going to start tracing the lines that are going to be the good lines. First of all, here is the beak. So we'll make the beak like this. And we'll make the bottom of the beak just a, a plain line. And we'll connect that like this. And then we're going to outline the top of the head. And in the back, I'm going to make a little zigzag. Just a couple little zigzags here like that. And then for the body, we're going to bring this around here like this. And then the back comes around and then it connects to that wing. And then this wing again comes around and connects to the point. And for the tail, I'm going to go ahead and make the ends kind of look like feathers. And that's a tail. I forgot an eye. An eye is just going to be a round circle. So we're just going to make a round circle. And we're going to fill most of it in, but leave a little white dot for a reflection. And then the last thing I'm going to do to, to make this look like a cardinal is it's got a black area in here. So we're going to go up and around the eye. And then it comes down and back to the beak. And that area is all black. But I want to leave a ring around the eye that I don't want to color in. So I'm going to just outline that again, leaving that white area. And then I'm going to color this in black. Okay. And then we'll make the feet. One, two, three. Leg, one, two, Three. Perfect. I'm going to erase what I don't need. And then I'm going to start coloring things in. I'm going to do this as quickly as I can. I don't have the ability yet to fast forward. I just haven't gotten that technology yet. So I do have another one that I did. And I will show you the finished product of that. But I'm also going to walk you through a couple of, of the ways to do this. Obviously, you want to use a, a marker or something that makes it easy and you just carefully trace the outside first and then you don't have to be as neat then with the inside you can kind of do it a little faster once you've traced the outside real neat if you use the point of the marker and you aim that right at the line that you're trying to stay in it makes it easier to to do that and you know what I forgot? I forgot to do some other marks. 
you can make a little bumpy line like this on the wing and then you can make some more feathers coming back and that looks a little bit more like a wing again use your marker and outline real carefully and then again when you color it in you don't have to be as neat but nice easy strokes work the best so I'll finish that later obviously the beak could be yellow that would be a good color for it the nose or the carrot should be orange again you just real carefully outline that and then I'm going to color that in in that round motion like that again to kind of give the feeling and the movement and the texture of a carrot it's round so if we color it in with a little bit of a round marker stroke you'll see those lines that add to its perception of looking round okay and I can choose it any color I want for the eyes and just carefully outline those and color those in And I'll do that to both of them, but I'll just do that to one. I want to make a plaid pattern on the hat and on the scarf. So I'll show you a way to do that. Since I'm going to want to use Christmas colors, I'm going to use green for this hat band. So I'm going to outline this in light green first. Again, real neat. If I just do nice, slow easy marks it's going to turn out better than trying to sometimes people get it and they just start scribbling as fast as they can to try to color it as fast as they can and it doesn't turn out as good because if you slow down and do it neatly it works a lot better so that's a nice way to color that in and then if i take a darker green and i use this to make a pattern I can make a little plaid pattern by making two lines straight or start straight and next to each other and close together. Then I'll spread it out a little bit and I'll make two more lines close together. Then I'll spread it out and then I'll make two more lines close together and I'll continue that pattern all the way across. And then going the other way, I will make two lines together on the bottom and then I'll spread it out a little bit and I'll make two lines together on the top. Now I have a nice plaid green band on the hat and I'll color that in black, I'll color that one in, I'll do, I'll color something in for there and then I can get out the watercolors and I can get blue paint and I can color in the sky using some blue paint it's best if you if all of your brush strokes go left to right or horizontally when you do a sky it just helps it and it also helps um, if you are real careful when you go around objects so that you don't paint over them just trace real carefully use the tip of the brush and once you've got that outline real nice you can again get a little bit more water a little bit more paint and you can just left to right and fill in that sky as best you can. When that all dries, it's going to look amazing and it's going to look like a nice blue sky in the background. You're going to want to get all the area in the background real nice. When you start to run out of paint, your, your brush starts to go like this where it, it looks like it's dry. Don't keep trying to work that. It's not going to work. You have to dip it into the water and you have to get more paint. That's the only way you're going to do this the right way. Carefully trace around your objects. Again, using the tip of the brush, showing you the way. I'm going to get some more water and paint already. 
I'm going to outline this because I, I want to work it while it's still wet. That way it uh, all kind of bleeds, to get, bleeds together and blends together nicely and it looks more like a sky. So if I can do this and mix this around while it's still wet, it's going to look a lot better. And this is still wet over there, so I just get, get that together. Now this is starting to dry up there, so I want to get up there and get some paint up into that area as quickly as possible. Still making sure that I'm doing it neatly. That's what's nice about using a Sharpie as well. The Sharpie that I outlined everything in, it's not going to bleed uh, because it's permanent. If I accidentally got some onto a, the Crayola marker, that marker might bleed into the into the paint because that's not permanent. So I'm just going to let that, and I'll get the rest of it. And um, I can even come back with some acrylic paint, and I can paint once this dries. I can paint a, a branch with brown, and then I can use some green acrylic paint and paint some little. Uh, bristles for a pine tree or something like that. So I'm going to show you what this is what it looks like when it's done. And one thing that I forgot to talk about is with that blue paint you can create these shadows on the snow. Blue is a perfect color to make a shadow looking on a snow, either in a snowman or if you're, you're painting a landscape and it's got snow on there and maybe there's footprints in the snow or maybe there's a shadow in the snow. Don't use black. Black looks dirty. Use blue and you'll get a, a much nicer look. I'll show you how I did that. So I just got a little blue. And it, this is going to be mostly watered down because I want it to be very light. And I, I just put that on the snowman and I'm just kind of making like a little half circle, like a little crescent on the snowman. And as it, as it gets to one point, you get, make it look real sm much smaller. And then that gives you the impression that there's a shadow on the snow. And you can do that under the scarf as well. Just one little line, one little neat line of light blue paint and it looks like a shadow. You can do it next to the scarf down there. You can do it underneath the scarf here as well. See how that looks like a shadow? Alright, well this is our snowman project. Again, it's for, six, or for second graders but any grade level can do this. Um, older kids, moms, dads, whoever wants to join in, this is an awesome little project and it makes for a great thing to put uh, over the mantle or somewhere to display during the Christmas time or winter time. You can uh, frame it and hang it up. It's a really great, great picture to, to create. So have fun and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Bye everybody.